Welcome to the shortwave radio channel, and we're going to use this uh, world map here to uh, show you and explain a little something about shortwave propagation. I know a lot of you have learned a lot from my last video explaining that target areas are sometimes um, in the same direction as where we are, and that's why a signal that's meant for Africa, from Madagascar, for example, to Africa is in the general direction of North America. So if the frequency is chosen right, it might actually be a great signal to listen to. And it happens with many signals we hear on the bands. And everywhere else, you know, signals from Romania towards West, West Europe, you know, they're kind of going in our direction. So if, like I said, the frequency is chosen right for the time, um, we might actually enjoy great signals from these stations, even though they're not targeting us at some times. Now, one of the things that is also interesting about shortwave propagation is the direction towards where you will transmit to a target area. So we'll take an example of uh, South Korea that wants to transmit to North America. So you got two choices. You can go and choose a direction which will be um, basically from around here where North and South Korea are and think that they're broadcasting towards us in this direction. But that is actually not a good idea. Usually east-west signals tend to not be as good as north-south signals. So how do you remedy this, first of all? And second of all, this is a longer path. You can have a shorter path of transmission towards us in a different way. And to do so, well, you transmit over the pole. So if you're here, so here, for example, is Japan. If Radio Japan would want to broadcast to us from Japan, it would take a signal and send it north. Now, we, this is difficult to see on a flat map, but when you send it north, you're going all the way over the pole, and you're actually going to have the signal come back down here. So this is kind of the opposite side. Let's look at a different map. This is a map that is kind of more representative of what a round Earth is all about. So once again, we talk about signals coming out of Asia and so on. What's going to happen with that is that a signal will be sent often towards the pole and it will actually cross the pole to come to our direction. Once again, very difficult to see unless I would use a, a globe, basically. So that signal will go through the North Pole to North America. And that's what most stations in Asia will do when they target North America. They will also do the same when they target Europe. Most of the time, they'll use signals that will go through the poles because it's a shorter path. And north-south signals tend to propagate better in general. So uh, that is one of the things that can happen. Now, it has one major problem, and it's that it's extremely sensitive to solar activity and geomagnetic conditions. So we talked in the previous videos of a polar cap absorption. Well, when that happens, that means that everything, we talked about it, everything to the pole in shortwave is pretty much is not, you know, attenuated to zero. That means all of these signals being sent out will not make it to North America or Europe because they'll be attenuated through the pole. Um, the other thing also of a signal that's going through the pole towards us, uh, you might notice that it's very fluttery. It's like the signal is really trembling. There's a lot of very fast fading. That's a, by the way, an indication that a signal is actually coming to us through the pole. It has to go through the, what we call the aurora regions. So even when the K index is very low, there's always something going on at the, the north and south poles because these are the places where the geomagnetic fields actually meet. Um, the north pole has, of course, the geomagnetic north pole. So all the lines of the geomagnetic field tend to actually arrive at a certain point there. And that, of course, funnels a lot of the energy of the solar wind through the pole. So it makes varying conditions and, and makes conditions actually change quite fast. In quiet conditions, you'll have strong signals, but a lot of flutter sometimes. 
But as the K index rises, it rises and attenuates signals through the pole very fast. So it's great because when conditions are good, sending a signal through the pole towards a region is a shorter path and usually works very well when conditions are right. But they are the first ones to be affected by anything happening with the geomagnetic field, uh, polar cup absorptions, and, and solar wind and solar activity. So that's why they are not as reliable. You might notice that it's easier to hear Radio Romania all the time because that signal comes from Europe and is sent to us through the Atlantic Ocean to the west. Of course, it doesn't have to cross the pole, so it's less affected by any geomagnetic conditions. It can be in a very strong geomagnetic uh, storm like we had. It will also be attenuated. But the signals that come through the pole will be the first to disappear from the band. So you might notice that although you hear Radio Romania 10 days out of 10 days, for example, as, an, uh, as a test, you might notice that if you try to hear Radio Thailand, that out of 10 days, there might be four or five days that it's not going to be there, or it's going to be very weak. That's because its signals going through the pole is attenuated easily. So that changes the propagation. So it's you know that's that's why signals from certain areas of the world are tough to to receive. Um, so you might say, okay, but what about Radio New Zealand? Well, Radio New Zealand does not go through the pole because Radio New Zealand broadcasts towards the Pacific area like this. So it kind of broadcasts towards us. By going through the Pacific Ocean, no need to go through the pole. It's more of a, you know, general south, north-south signal still because it's very, very uh, far south on in the Pacific Ocean. But it's still more of a south, south, east, southwest, you know, signal, um, depending where you are. Uh, than it is a signal that would, you know, you don't need to go through the poles to do this. So there's a lot of that going on, and um, that is one of the reasons why often uh, the signals from Asia are the first to be, um, you know, disappearing. All the Chinese, you know, uh, jammers and the CNR1, the China National Radio, all of that that we hear, pretty much all comes through the pole most of the time. So they will all disappear at the same time also. So it's kind of interesting to see the different propagation, propagation modes that are used on shortwave radio. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching my videos.